it just that was just most multiple of the most some of blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry for the construction noises. They hate. Hey friends, it is me Alana. Welcome back to my channel, The Awkward Book Nude. For this video, I'm going to be doing my October wrap up for you all. I read four books over October, which is like slightly less than normal, but I'm okay with that. It was kind of a weird month anyways for me, just like mental health wise. So I'm just proud that I managed to get four books done, <laughs> honestly. So the first book that I read was Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. I gave this a four out of five stars. I really enjoyed this story. I enjoyed that the romance was not the main part of the story. The main point of the story was like family and just like inner strength and the power of like believing in yourself and stuff like that and forgiveness. That was just some of the themes that was playing a part in this. But in the moments that the the romance was shown, I really enjoyed that too because it was so like tender and like really purposeful, if that makes sense. And like you f you kind of felt it even more because like the rest of the story didn't have it, if that makes sense. So it's essentially um about a girl. She lives in a tribe it's kind of like if honestly the story is kind of like a viking-esque uh story so like she i don't know what else to call like they have names for their people but they're they kind of remind me of vikings almost and so she's in one clan and then there's another clan that's like their enemy clan and they like every i think five years there's like a set time where e both of the clans go to war and it's just, it's like a thing. It's traditional. <laughs> like, they've been doing it for years, and people die. <laughs> and then, after that time is up, they go back to whatever they're doing and just live their lives and, and wait in anticipation until the next uh, five years, essentially. So, previously, before this book starts, the main character, she loses her brother in one of the wars. And um, it's just her and her father now, and her fa I think her father is like one of the heads of the tribe. I can't remember fully. But uh, as the book starts, they are in this time period of fighting, and during one ba battle, she believes that she sees her brother, and she believes that he saved her. And at first, like she's convinced, and then like her family is like, oh, well, like maybe like you just saw his soul, and all this kind of stuff, and she's just like, okay, maybe you're right. Blah, blah, blah. So the next battle happens, and her brother is alive, <laughs> and he kidnaps her because she saw too much, and she gets taken kind of like as a hostage almost into the enemy um, tribe's territory, and there she kind of learns like, like are these people really her enemy? Like are they really as bad as she's been told? Why like is the war really? something they all want in their lives for the next however many years and through this like she kind of learns to see people as humans and not just as like beings to kill and yeah and then as like the story gets further they have another enemy that comes in that they all need to like band together for essentially but I again I loved this story I love the romance that I think that was the main thing like at first I was like oh this is a good story and then like the moments of romance that really like stuck out to me like I think made me love this even more because it's just again like you you're in the story full of battles and killing and then you just have these like s sweet moments between the two char main character and her love interest and you're just kind of like oh my gosh I did not know this could be as tender in a book full of Vikings, <laughs> like honestly. Um, but definitely enjoyed this. Uh, I enjoyed Adrian Young's writing. Like I loved the way that she told the story, and I'm intrigued to see um, how her next book is. Like I have the, her second book, which is The Girl the Sea, sea Gave Back. So I'm intrigued with, to see what she does in that one, just because I did love this one so much. All right, the next book that I read was Exit Pursued by a Bear by E.K. Johnston. This was part of my fall TBR. Sky in the Deep was also part of my fall TBR. I forgot to say that. Um, I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed this for what it was, if that makes sense. So it's essentially about a girl who goes to cheer camp and she ends up getting roofied at one of the dances 
and she gets sexually assaulted. She doesn't remember anything because she was roofied, so she doesn't know, like she doesn't have, she doesn't have the typical like PTSD and the typical um, like trauma, traumatic emotions towards it because she doesn't remember. She more feels like disconnected because of the fact that like there are no memories and this it's something that's being told to her that happened and it's not something she remembers experiencing. So I, I enjoyed the, the, that portrayal because like you don't really see that that often in books. Normally it's like the character remembers and then like they're dealing with their PTSD and their trauma and this she has to kind of prepare herself to deal with that because she knows at some point she's gonna have memories again but she doesn't know when it's gonna hit she doesn't know if it's ever gonna come back and she kind of just has to deal with that i enjoyed that it did uh talk about how like abortion is an option it isn't a valid option and i enjoyed that nobody really um had any strong judgments toward that and it was more of like it's a her choice thing which obviously it is so i enjoyed that a conversation um i enjoyed the therapist a lot like she ended up her family ended up getting her like a therapist just in case she needed one and he ended up basically just helping her with her mouth homework most of the time because she didn't have like because she didn't have memories she didn't have much to talk about except for the things in her life and her math homework so i enjoyed that because it was kind of funny but i think the thing i liked the most was like the friendship like her and her best friend were like thick as thieves as soon as it happened to her and as soon as she was in the hospital her best friend was right there and at first she started to like break down because she was like what do you mean this happened and her best friend just like climbed on the bed and like took her face in her hands and was like like we've got this like it's fine like you need like just calm down like just talk through this first and then we will break down later and it was like very like you could just tell like their relationship was like so close and i appreciated it i appreciated seeing that throughout the book i also love that she kind of like she was in a relationship beforehand and that didn't end well after the sexual assault and then she kind of like allowed herself to have feelings again for someone else but she also it also wasn't rushed you know what i mean sometimes in stories like this i feel like the author like rushes the character into a new relationship and it's like she just went through trauma, like, don't rush it kind of thing. Um, but this one, it was kind of like, it was very, like, the option is there if she wants it, but she doesn't have to choose it right away. And I liked that a lot, too. Anyways, I enjoyed the story. Um, definitely recommend this if you are interested. Uh, definitely be aware of the trigger warnings. And, yeah. Alright, so the next book I read was Slay by Brittany Morris. And, oh my goodness, I love this book so much. I gave this a... 4.5 out of 5 stars. I loved the aspect of the story. Like, I loved Brittany Morris's writing. I loved her characters. I loved the fact that this was based on a game that basically celebrated blackness and what it means to being black. And I loved that the story, the conversations in the stories always revolved around, like, what is blackness? Like, is there a strict definition for blackness? Is there not one? Is, like, there's different, like, it embraced the fact that there are different ways to be black and there are different looks to being black and there are different things to embracing being black and there's no one way to be black basically and i loved that so much um especially because i related to um cicada her like co-creator of the game in this because she was mixed and as soon as uh there was like one conversation they were having where Cicada was like being honest with her and she was like, I just want to let you know, I'm only half black. I'm sorry if it feels like I betrayed you. Like, she's like, I'm sorry if it feels like I'm not black enough, but I just want to let you know. And like, I love the fact that like she said that because I related to it a lot. Like I related to it so much. And then um, the main character was like, dude, you're black. Like, black is black basically <laughs> the boyfriend oh my gosh i wanted to punch him in the face by the end of the book i was so mad <laughs> i felt insulted by a lot of the things he was saying he was saying partially because like the one thing he was saying related to like me in general and i was like not cool bro but yeah like he was just annoying also i was getting so heated with uh kiara and her her friends her white friends because they just didn't get it and it's really the ones that kept like asking her about like black cultural things and especially the one that kept being like oh well her game is racist because like 
uh, she only lets black people in, and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, get out. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I just love this. It made me feel so many emotions, which is good. And yeah, I recommend this a lot. I think this will probably be one of my favorites of 2019. I'm excited to see what else Brittany Morris writes because I, like, love this so much. Also, I just love the fact that it's a bug about black gamers. Like, oh, okay. Like, I love it. I realized I didn't say anything about this book, like, story-wise. So this is about a girl, Nikara, who created a game called Slay. And it's basically like a virtual reality card game. And in it, you are, like, um, it's kind of like Pokemon almost. Like, where you're playing, like, with cards, though. And you're, like, you, like, battle with the cards. And each card represents, like, a different cultural black thing. So, like, there was, like, a Weave card and a LeBron James card, I think, or was it a Magic Johnson card? It was one of those cards, and no, it was a Jordan's card because the shoes. And she like created this game, and it's been like her her baby. And so her game kind of blows up when a kid who like was involved in her game is murdered due to uh, reasons involving his character in the game. And it kind of blows up where people are questioning if this game is racist, if this game is valid. And she kind of has to stand up for herself and stand up for her game because, like, black people are allowed to have their own spaces as well. And it's not exclusion, it's just us wanting to have our own space, essentially. And yeah, so it's really good. I think the only thing that I, like not struggled with but I was kind of confused by there were this this is a book that has multiple POVs which I did enjoy but there was like one POV that I was like oh like I guess it's gonna be relevant to the story but then it really wasn't and so I didn't really get why that was in there otherwise I love this book definitely recommend it you should read it read it so yeah okay moving on the next book I read was Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This was a book recommended be recommended to me by my friend Michelle from Michelle Reads YA. Uh, this was part of my fall TBR as well. It was the book she recommended to me for that. And I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. It's essentially about a boy who moved to Utah like 3 years ago. And so he lives in a city that is predominantly filled with people of the Mormon faith. And he... On a dare from his best friend, basically, he joins this uh, seminar writing class for his last half of his senior year. And there he meets um, this other guy who is, uh, I think he graduated or took the seminar and successfully wrote a book. And now he's about to, like, be a published author. And they kind of connect and basically like fall for each other the only thing is that the one guy the like guy that's the author he is part of the mormon faith which they don't believe in um lgbtq relationships essentially like they they believe like you can have the, the attraction as long as you don't uh act on it and oh my goodness <laughs> the story was like up and down and throwing me all over the place I gave it four stars and I couldn't give it five stars because it really bothered me how much Sebastian, the guy that's like older and the author, he just kept playing with like Tanner's feelings. It was like, and I get, I also, I was frustrated but I also understood at the same time as someone who did grow up in like a strict religion as well. I like, ugh, I just don't know how to describe it. Like, like Tanner was going through this thing of like he wanted to stay true to his religion because it was his only thing like it was his life basically especially with his family um, but he also wanted to be true to himself because he loved Tanner uh, but it was just so frustrating how he was so wishy-washy sometimes like he was he would be there and then the next he would be like no we're not dating or no I'm not gay or no I'm not this and I'm like bro you gotta choose one and I understood why because like he didn't want to lose his family and all this kind of stuff and he knew they would shun him but at the same time I was like Tanner's a baby like don't hurt him and it was just a whole thing so that was like the biggest frustration I had honestly it was just and it was like it, it would be fine if it was one time but it was multiple times and I was like oh my goodness uh, and like I was like crying because I was like I just want them to be together like stop hurting each other <laughs> basically so it was a whole thing but I also I enjoyed the expiration of like 
re like religion like your like identity in religion like i understood i ex enjoyed that exploration because like i don't i think it's like not something that's touched upon as much and then i enjoyed the fact that like you realize like you can be like religious but also like be true to who you are too like if that makes sense so i also enjoyed that as well like tanner didn't sh or sebastian didn't just like walk away from the church and be like forget this to be like with who he wanted to be he was just like you know what like I don't like this aspect of my religion, but I believe that, like, God still loves me no matter what. And I, I enjoyed that a lot, too, because you don't see that either way. Sometimes it's, like, the extremes. Like, you either go to the extreme one way where, like, someone's, like, I can't. Like, someone will, like, basically ignore their um, passions to be a part of their religion. Or someone will just completely walk away from their religion in order to pursue their passions and I liked that this was kind of in the middle where it was like he he acknowledged that he didn't want this aspect of it but he also he wasn't gonna walk away from it either I guess so yeah that was a thing otherwise it was good <laughs> I am intrigued to read another Christine Lauren book I might switch to their adult romance books though so yeah but thanks for Michelle for recommending that to me <laughs> but those are all the books I read in October. Hopefully you all enjoyed watching this video. Um, hopefully I can edit it down because it's kind of long, but mostly because I kept talking and making mistakes, so. Um, if you all liked the video, please like it down below. If you all have any comments, questions, concerns, or whatever else, please comment them down below. I always love interacting with you all in the comments. And if you're not good at commenting, I'm gonna go ahead and see leave me an emoji down below so I know you were here. I'm still in the idea for my friend Sylvia from Wish Fulfillment. And if you all want to see more videos from me, please subscribe down below. And if you want to get notified for when I post videos, you can hit that little bell button down below and it'll tell you when I post weekly. And yeah, so you all are some flowers in a world full of weeds.